Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier, and I'm here, as always, I'm a good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. The end of the year is upon us, sir. (laughs) How are you doing this afternoon? Yeah, I'm doing great. How's it going, Scott? Doing fantastic, my friend. I cannot believe that in just a few days, we're going to see a three oh, man. in our four digit year, yep. right? Yep. So 2023 is here. So the it's next coming. few episodes, Tommy, are going to be really fun. We're going to talk about the overall benefits of fasting. And then we're going to talk about this mm-hmm. new concept that we've been working on, which is the fasting wheel of life. So if you yeah. guys have done some life coaching or some goal setting in the past, There's this exercise that you do called the Wheel of Life. We're going to apply it to the fasting lifestyle, which is what this podcast is about and what we Mm -hmm. are doing week in and week out and day in and day out inside of our groups and challenges is how do you get fasting to create a quality of life and health level of health that hasn't been obtainable in other dieting and weight loss techniques, right? So how do we make it adaptable to become part of our lifestyle? So we're going to talk about the benefits of the basic benefits of fasting. And then we're gonna go into the conversation on what does it look like setting yourself up for having the best year, the, the best year yet. So how can 2023 yeah. be the best year? And not just, we're not just talking about the scale and those dang 20, 30, 40, or whatever plus pounds that you've been meaning to get rid of, right? Yeah. Uh, and then like we're gonna to do a year in review too. Mm-hmm. So year in review episode and then Then we're going to have a really cool conversation about a study about four and six hour fasting windows and those effects on health. But we're also going to be releasing a new, new, brand new, still in production, okay, brand (laughs) new resource that is going to be about starting your fasting journey and building the necessary foundational habits Mm -hmm. up to a 24 hour fast and beyond. So that's gonna be awesome. New resources loading, new conversations happening today. Benefits of fasting for metabolic health. Yes, we're gonna talk a little bit about the scale, but go a little bit deeper. How we're gonna frame out what the start of 2023 can look like with fasting and your fasting goals, right? Insert Mm -hmm. the fasting wheel of life. And then we'll have a cool year in review conversation after the first of the year be able to wish everybody a happy 2023 and a happy new year coming up next week, as well as, you know, highlighting the most downloaded kind of episodes over the last year to really direct y'all to the high notes, right? Because now that we've gotten 100 and I mean, I think 159, 160 episodes, we want to make sure we have these checkpoints, right? That you can go back to, refer back to if you're new, welcome. You're coming in at a perfect time. If you're an OG, yeah. great. We got a we got a place to send you for a reset. And then I'm super excited about that January 10th episode with that new resource that we've got coming. So yeah, it's gonna be cool. Yeah, put some put some like some guideposts in the sandbox. You know, like yeah, go go play over here. Some of these episodes are are really cool over here, and we've you know gotten some great feedback from from this one over here. So it's, it's gonna be cool. I love I love closing out the year with some some really good intention because I I I can't tell you like. The, the diet and, and those pounds that I needed to lose, it was always like the reason to do a New Year's resolution for me. It was always the reason to like write some things down at the end of the year. And it feels so much better, you know, now having having the, the tools and having things arranged differently so that that's not 
That's not my focal point. Even if I, I want to lose 10 pounds or 50 pounds or whatever it might be, the thinking about it and the structure behind it, and then how I'm going to actually measure my progress and give myself feedback on how it's going feels completely like 180 degrees different from how I would have done it maybe five years ago. And then kept, you know, going on that same roller coaster and, and kind of hitting my head up against the corner in frustration. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's so much research out there that shows the inefficiency of new year's resolutions, right. And that you stop. And we're not going to talk about that. We've done episodes on that in the past, right? Right. You know, we've talked about the weight gain and and the, the truth about holiday weight gain and, and the scale and, you know, all of the pressure and angst and guilt and frustration that comes along with that. We're mm -hmm. going to frame this in the next few episodes in a positive light of what you can do and what you can control. If you want to hear kind of what we did last year and how we're going to be leveling it up for this year, you know, you can go back and, and listen to you know, the end of the year episodes through November and December of last year and kind of mm. how we frame things out. And this year we're bringing new energy, new focus, new skills, new tools to the forefront of this yeah. fasting for life journey. So I'm super pumped up about it, super excited about it as well. Me too. So the start of today's conversation came out of an article from levelshealth.com, which is one of the main players in the CGM world, which is the continuous glucose monitoring world. Yeah. So there is a skewed kind of focus here on blood sugar, but I think it's really important mm -hmm. when we can have the conversation about what truly matters and why do we want to lose weight, right? So yeah. why are you here? Well, you've probably had failed weight loss attempts in the past. Sure. Most people come to fasting like I did to lose weight. Me too. Right? Yeah. So Both what, are, what are those benefits of fasting for health, not for the scale? Right. So mm -hmm. what is fasting? Why does it matter? What is it important? Well, I mean, we just recorded an episode, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, where we talked about, you know, the different fasting windows, but the importance yeah. of the cardiometabolic implications or what is that going to do in terms of decreasing our risk of becoming a statistic that has a disease process that is due to the carrying and the, the metabolic dysfunction of carrying the extra weight and having an imbalanced lifestyle or view of what health it is, whose responsibility it is, and how I can obtain it. Mm. Well, that's a lot different than, well, my doctor said I need to lose 20 pounds, or man, I want to fit into sure. that pair of jeans, or man, I want to weigh what I did when I got married, or that. Yeah possibly unobtainable number from when you were in high school when the imbalance yeah, or health. just yeah started right so fasting is a powerful tool to balance that metabolic health reduce the in inflammation improve cardiovascular health and not become one of those statistics mm. you know that eight or nine reasons why people pass away here in the united states is because of blood sugar and weight related issues so I want to start with what is fasting, the benefits of fasting, talk about insulin resistance and glucose, and then focus on, talk a little bit about weight loss, but then what we should be targeting for the best year yet in terms of 2023 when yeah. it comes to weight loss and this fasting lifestyle. And that's where the fasting wheel of life is going to come in play. Yeah, because if, if all we have to look at is that number on the scale, is that weight, then how does that equate? especially if it's, if it was like doctor prescribed, you know, but like, how does that equate to everything else that, that matters or like the overall health and, and the, the focal points of my motivation and my inspiration to keep going with, with something that's working, especially like during those tougher times, if it's just that number on the scale, that's oftentimes not enough that that has like limited power in my willpower and inspiration and and like longevity to to my process we're going to need we're going to need more tools than that to to kind of fuel the journey i think two things you just said that stood out to me one was you talked about like more than the scale right so mm -hmm. if if that's all we have or if we only have blood work done once every 6 to 12 months yeah true you know that's that's a tough like all right i'm going to drive to I don't know, a certain town in North Dakota that I've never been to from Houston, Texas. Okay. And I'm only going to turn the GPS on twice. <laughs> and then I have to shut it off in 30 seconds. Good luck to me. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to end up in Mexico. Okay. I am, I am, I mean, I've got my wife, I'm driving, I get the GPS on and I can still get lost. Right. So it's right. a running joke here in our family. I am not 
you know, geographically aware, spatially aware yeah. in terms of direction. I'm directionally yeah. challenged. Okay. <laughs> me too. But the other thing you mentioned there was the personal journey piece or, you know, when we're looking at, you know, what are those checkpoints or what are those metrics or what are those things that we can, the motivational pieces, like where is our willpower lie and, and why we're doing it really matters as well. But we got to start somewhere mm -hmm. with getting some consistent habits with our fasting. And we talk mm -hmm. all across different research articles, different conversations, you know, why is fasting worked to reverse my undiagnosed blood sugar issues and mm -hmm. give me my life back and allow me to show up differently as a husband, as a father, to not become, you know, my family, the generational path of health and disease that I've watched all my grandparents go down in terms of dementia yeah. and diabetes and cancers and all that kind of stuff. How do we prevent that? Well, you got to start with fasting. And that's what we truly believe is that is the easiest, most simplest way to do it. But if you come to fasting and you Google fasting, you've got time-restricted eating, time-restricted windows, intermittent fasting, eating window, nutrition window, feast, fast, famine, periodic mm -hmm. fasting, alternate day fasting, 24-hour fast, extended fast, warrior fast. What is? What are the definitions of all of those things? So simply fasting for us, by definition, is putting an intentional time restriction on when you have consumption of caloric intake. So you're going to have a window where you delay gratification or you delay food, and then you're going to have an intentional window to ingest good nutritionally dense food choices that are going to support your body's ability to tap into those long-term fat stores. Yeah. You're going, okay, that didn't sound any, any more simple, <laughs> right? So okay. here it is, 16-8. Your typical yeah. intermittent fasting, you fast for 16, you consume for eight, mm. right? Periodic fasting, you've got your 5-2 diet, you've got your ADF schedules, right? And we've done episodes on all of these, so just go back, search yeah. Fasting for Life podcast, ADF. Fasting for Life podcast, 5-2. Fasting, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all there, right? The we even did one on fast mimicking diet, right? Which is sure, yeah. interesting to me, because you consume food, but then it's fasting, but it's not. Yeah. Then it's you've like got your 24 bar. hour fast. Yeah. The fast bar, right? You're, fasting with food. <laughs> yeah. Fasting with food. Interesting. Your OMAD fasts, right? Your 24 hour fast, your warrior fast, your 20 hour fast. The reality is, is like you have to start somewhere. And most people mm -hmm. come to fasting. And we talked about the study with the shift workers last week, yeah. you know, about using a 14 hour uh, open eating window. Yeah. Time restricted yeah. eating window. And then they made a change all the way down, just a three hour change all the way down to 11 hours, right? So we're not even yeah. at the 16-8 model yet. So what I we would recommend is you build on this as you go throughout the year, or if you've fallen off, then you haven't figured out a repeatable schedule that works for you long-term. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like that's that's one metric point, like to hit a little bit higher of, of a fast than you have in the past. Like that's that's one thing that's not just, hey, what, what's the number on the scale? But have I been able to consistently, <laughs> have I been able to consistently do like a 14 hour versus a 15 or a 16 or, or maybe an 18 hour, right? Like pushing the boundary a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I totally derailed you there because I was pointing at you emphatically. So that right. was terrible podcasting 101 <laughs> right there. We are in a audio medium and I'm, I'm doing visual things that's disrupting yeah, your thought course. process. So yeah, apologies. Right. <laughs> but if you're waking up, you're fasting and you're waking up and you're the first thing you look at is the scale, that scale is going to punch you in the face. Even when you do things well, or yeah. if you have a good day or a bad day, or you have an expectation, a time related or Ooh, scale expectation. related expectation, oh yeah. then you're going to be, you're going to be frustrated at some point. And enough of those frustrations results in yep. chips away, throwing chips out the plan, away. chips away yeah. at that willpower, right? So Weight loss is important, right? We know metabolic dysfunction is linked to obesity, which is also associated with diabetes and metabolic syndrome yeah. and cardiovascular diabetes. disease, yep. diabetes, cancers, now type three diabetes, otherwise known as Alzheimer's and mm -hmm. plaque development in the brain. And that, you know, you can look, just Google this, right? And you'll see articles everywhere, you know, in articles like JAMA and New England Journal of Medicine and Lancet and, and uh, cell metabolism, and mm -hmm. which used to be called cell and advances in nutrition and all these different places, right? But the simple reason why fasting works for weight loss is that it's immediately going to put you in a, in a place where you can consume less. And yeah. then it gives your body less time with insulin being high, which means mm -hmm. your body can tap into and stay in 
fat burning mode. But there's right. more at play here because there will be potential, you know, for caloric restriction, regardless if you're fasting or not, daily long-term calorie restriction would can and will result potentially in both fat and muscle loss if you're not careful. So we don't want to damage our metabolic flexibility is the bigger point here. And if our right. scale is our starting point and you're only looking at the scale, you're likely to fail. Wow. Yes. Great points. And I, I feel like just, just that frustration piece and knowing where should I be targeting? Like, should it be, how often should I look at the scale, right? Like that, that could be one of the things like going into 2023, if I feel like looking at the scale every single morning has been a derailing point, let's look at the average. Let's look at the, the weekly, the moving average, you know, that kind of thing. And like, that's a, that's a great way to zoom out just a little bit. We don't want to throw it out, right? Because like we need, we need the input, but we also need it to not derail us on any given day when we have been doing everything right or most things right. And then we only have one metric, one opportunity for feedback. And then it says, no, you haven't been doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden my brain goes, okay, well, I guess we've been on the wrong track. Maybe this isn't working, but absolutely that may not be the case just because of the the fluctuations that come along with it. So I love taking the average right there. Yeah, and I wanna talk about metabolic flexibility or that idea, right, of the ability to fluctuate between, you know, burning glucose versus fat and turning into ketones, right, and giving your yeah. body energy and support that way. So, you know, with some of these things, we'll talk about that with the fasting, you know, the wheel, the fasting for life, wheel of life. I don't know what we're gonna call it, but we're gonna to put together <laughs> some things that we want you guys to focus on starting off this year that will mm -hmm. pull away from this just, I only have the scale as my own metric. Things to think sure. about, things to consider, right? Yeah. But you know, one of the things with fasting that's great is that it, it can potentially stabilize your appetite and your hunger hormones and your, your hunger cues and you know all of those things. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But this idea of metabolic flexibility, right? So your body has two primary fuel sources. And this is mm -hmm. tapping into the conversation of the benefits of fasting. So You've got glucose, which is usually delivered through the carbohydrates you eat, right? Mm -hmm. And fat, which can also be stored and later converted into a fuel source in the form of ketones. Mm -hmm. But you also have the body fat, which can yeah. be converted to fuel, which is what we want to tap into, sure. which is hard to do if you're constantly in a state of glucose, if you're constantly yeah. in a state of signaling your body, insulin. yeah, to having insulin in the bloodstream. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. When glucose concentrations rise, your body reduces insulin, which is the gatekeeper, which tells the cells, primarily your skeletal muscle and your liver to begin with, mm -hmm. to, to either burn or store that energy. Yeah. Or it gets, if there's excess, it gets converted into fat. So the metabolic benefits of fasting don't start until around that 12 hour mark. In some of the research, we, have also gone into some of the articles where it shows that your insulin is going to take longer to drop than you would typically expect. And the only way mm -hmm. to really know that is by looking at your blood sugar numbers yeah. in the morning and then periodically throughout the day. So yeah. the scale isn't going to tell you, is insulin dropping enough? And that's why we're talking about some of these other signals in a minute, or yeah. some of these other things you can look at, like energy, for instance, because you may not be switching into ketosis or you may not have depleted your glycogen enough yeah. where your body starts to, you know, turn on that fat burning ketone production. Sure. And, it, hasn't and it's, yet. it's not black or white. It's a, yeah. it's a sliding scale. A transition. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of sticking points, you know, along the way. And that's what that metabolic flexibility refers to is mm -hmm. your body's ability to toggle between the fed right? Glucose, insulin, high state, or the fasted mm -hmm. state where your body can flip the switch to metabolize those carbohydrates, stored glycogen and glucose in your skeletal muscle and liver, yeah. and then allow your body to tap into the fat stores. And, you know, you can also take into account exercise and rest periods as well, because that's another way mm -hmm. to increase your metabolic flexibility. But yeah. we want more toggling into the ketone fat burning state rather than the carbohydrate, glucose, you know, glycogen state, which is where yeah. typically most of us live, especially if we had multiple failed attempts at trying yeah. to lose the same 20, 30, 40 plus 50 pounds that seemingly increases as we get older. 
Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And like the the longer or the the larger the meal is before the fast started, the more opportunity I had for glycogen stores, right? The the more calories I brought in. So that that means the longer it's going to take to burn through those before my body actually needs to make that metabolic shift, which is which can also be a point of why aren't I in ketosis faster? Why aren't I getting higher numbers on my keto mojo? Let's say like we hear or, that a lot. Or the, maybe the strips or the breath monitors, yeah. right? Oh yeah. man, it's showing that I'm not in ketosis. Well, you want to be doing what you just mentioned, Tommy, which is actually measuring the ketone levels. And you, we did a whole yeah. episode on, on ketone monitoring. You can go search again for that and, and dive into it a little bit more. But yeah, that's the point is that that's what we want. Yeah. What if you, what if in, in 2023, instead of just jumping on the scale every day, what if you took your, your blood sugar numbers, like upon, upon waking every day and you track that average along with the average on the scale for, for something to, to aim towards and to measure your progress rather than just the fickle mechanical scale to potentially smack me in the face and you know, <laughs> like right, set me derail up for, me. For, yeah. Negative. Or, feedback or, right there. yeah. Or, or how my new year's resolutions go out the window by the end of January. Right. Which is what right, the statistics yeah. show, right? That <laughs> if they lasted that long. Yeah. If, if you yeah. even made them, right. Yeah. Cause you know, they don't work. Like you could do a poll, go on the street and ask right. people, well, I don't make those. I know they don't work. Right. right. Your brain's like, what are we wasting time for? <laughs> Consistent habits is where the, is where the magic happens. So when we talk yeah. about this metabolic flexibility to land the plane here in, in like really where fasting comes in, the flexibility can can help you burn more fat, right? Say like you're doing more of a keto type diet. We did an entire episode just specifically around the benefit of a 90 day keto diet yeah. in terms of diabetes yeah. reversal, Huge. incredibly powerful. Well, because then you don't have to shift so far over as often away right. from the fat burning. You don't have to go right. as far to the sugar burning side. When your body's not it, good at it, doing yeah. this 90 days consistently yes. is such an advantageous situation to put your body in from a metabolic standpoint. Absolutely, it is. The reason we're talking about this is metabolic syndrome in itself, right? Which is three of the five medical conditions of abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high serum triglycerides, and low HDL, aka air quotes, the good cholesterol, right? So the metabolic syndrome, so when your body is less efficient at burning fat, and gets accustomed to persistent glucose intake, which results in high insulin, then metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes, and chronic inflammation are associated with this exact inflexibility of your body to be able to flip that switch, which is where fasting essentially comes in and forces your body to practice this over time. Yeah. This right. process of switching between carb glucose when you eat and burning fat for energy. So. I already mentioned this, just alluded to it, is exercise is another way to do this as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not saying don't exercise, um, well, but yeah. walking is a powerful tool. Multiple mm -hmm. times we talk about walking post-meal, even just putting walking in a few days a week can be a huge stimulator for this metabolic flexibility, right? So yeah. fasting is going to literally force your body, and I don't mean painfully, but like it's going <laughs> to stack the deck in your favor by putting yeah. yourself in this period of your body to get better at decreasing the insulin and turning on that ketone burning ability or that fat burning ability. Yeah, what what really helped me when when understanding that is is the idea that if I've been accumulating weight for for months to years to even decades and I and I really haven't consistently like been staying at a stable healthy weight for a long period of time and I, like history of failed diets and and things like that. It doesn't right. it doesn't have to be like all doom and gloom in the history. But at the same time, if I've been accumulating weight, then that means on average, like I haven't had to be in a ketogenic or, or a ketone producing state. So that means that I haven't been transcribing the, the genes that lead to the enzymes that put me in a, in a ketosis state. So that's something that has to be ramped up. It's a practice for the body that it gets more efficient. You, you get better at it over time. And that's why this metabolic flexibility can get better and easier and more efficient over time. But that's, that's why that, that ketogenic phase, that ketogenic diet phase can be such a powerful thing, especially with a lot of insulin resistance, because you, you don't have to be very good at it just yet. And it allows the, the body a chance to, to actually adapt to that, get better over time and still, you know, still see good results with fasting and, and with your nutrition too. Yeah. And I, I was going to go right to, to insulin resistance and you led me right there. So, yeah. you know, regardless of all the fasting types that I rattled off in the beginning, it shows research shows and suggests that 
you can improve insulin sensitivity with any of those types of fasting quickly. Mm -hmm. This yeah. means that cells, they're smart, that can take in glucose efficiently, allowing blood sugar to return to normal after eating. The data shows, you know, even in a, in a you know, which we don't do often, right? But a 48 hour fast, a two day fast, yeah. your insulin sensitivity, which is the good effectiveness of insulin, remains improved through the days you eat post the two day fast. So it's not yeah. just during your fasting windows, but it's post fast. You're yeah. creating that body's ability, those new neural pathways that you can stimulate these things to become more routine, mm -hmm. which is, you know, why once you get through those first few stumbling blocks with, you know, hydration and electrolytes, and sometimes you get the dizziness yeah. and the headaches sleep. when you transition, the yeah. sleep disturbances when you transition yeah. from sugar burner into fat burner or from, you know, glucose glycogen into ketone production, you're going to see that, you know, playing around with those fasting windows can actually have a better impact on your circadian rhythms, which is the hormone driver of your body. Yeah. So not just insulin, but also the circadian impacts as well, which is really cool that we saw in that shift work study mm -hmm. that we talked about last week. So it's huge for long term right there. Yeah, right. Because we want to reduce yeah. risk and not become the statistic, right? And we share the stats often and we know sometimes it can be heavy, but the reality is, is that's the path I was on. That's the Me path too. that we're all on unless yep. we do mm -hmm. something different, right? So yeah. When we transition here, Tommy, and we we want to talk about sustainability, how we're going to set ourselves up for success in 2023, this new concept of this fasting wheel of life has come about, right? Mm. And I've had coaching throughout most of my personal and professional life. And it's always, when I'm at my best, I usually have some encouragement and accountability, right? Some, sure. some target setting along the way. So yeah. we do goals training, right? Where you set smart goals, but we actually make it smarter goals and we mm -hmm. apply it to the personal realm. This is all stuff that I used to do, in, you know, inside of the clinics a lot where yeah. we get together and do a year in review. But the smart goals is like sustainable, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely. There's other words you can swap in and out of there. It depends on whose spin sure. you put on it. But then the E yeah. and the R is the most important part for us, which is you evaluate and mm -hmm. you realign or you evaluate and you review or you yep. you look at the experience and then you, you know, redesign those goals. Like there's yeah. a period where you're going to sit there and actually go, OK, well, is this working for me? And is this something that I can see being sustainable? So, so if we're on. go ahead, those that ER is where you took it from a two dimensional thing to a three dimensional thing. That's where you took it from a screenshot to a roadmap. Like you're actually, you're, you're taking the action on it. So if you've set smart goals in the past, but never done the ER, that, that can be the missing link right there. Yeah. So how do we translate that into a fasting lifestyle? And that's where this idea of the fasting wheel of life has come in. So if you're only using the scale, right, and we're going to encourage you to, maybe you don't have to start doing ketones, but knowing what your blood sugar is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And this doesn't mean you have to finger prick yourself for the rest of your life or sign up for an expensive CGM for the rest of your life. But sure. getting some feedback to know physiologically what's going on is important. Like there was an example of someone I saw on social media where they ingested a, it was one of the fast food burgers with a small fry. Okay. And it took almost 48 hours for those blood sugar numbers to come back down to normal. Holy smokes. What if you had woken up the next day because that's the only thing you ate and you woke mm. up the next day and you're like, man, the scale went down. I'm doing great. Mm. And then you said, oh, well, today was supposed to be a one meal a day, but now I'm going to make it an IF window because there's mm. an event that's come up or an opportunity to go get lunch or something. And because the scale gave me good feedback. And because now you're like, OK, well, your insulin levels and your blood sugar levels are still high. Yeah, they haven't recovered because of the lack of metabolic flexibility. So blood sugar is a peak behind the curtain. Yeah. into what's what's happening and it's a skill set it's not something you can just do once and be like oh yeah this makes sense right? right so that's where this okay what else can we look at what other signs or symptoms or positive reinforcement can we get outside of the scale which could also undermine our progress in that example mm -hmm. that i just gave you wow yeah what well, one of the first ones that that comes to my mind is is also like energy so if I'm looking at my my actual blood sugar numbers in the morning, I can I can also take take account of what does my energy feel like in the morning too, like upon waking. And then my my next favorite marker for energy is after my my biggest meal of the day too, because 
the less metabolically flexible I am, the more it's going to smack me right in the face like after a larger meal. I'm going to feel it. I might feel lethargic, a little more Thanksgiving-like than I would like, you know, those kind of things like, oh, do I need to rest? Apropos after? for the season. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but like, that's a big one. So just a little bit of like, just writing it down, maybe putting a note in my phone where I'm just going to make two quick notes each day for one of these, one of these markers that's kind of like resonating with me right now is, is going to be a way to like track something that really matters that can give me really, really good feedback as I go along, whether or not the, the scale is kind of agreeing with me or, or giving me positive feedback. Yeah. We had someone in the group say, well, the scale hasn't changed much this past year. And I, you know, they've been with us for a few months. Uh, yeah. Yep. Fasting. I'm like, man, I feel like I wasted a whole year. And yeah, as we started to pry in a little bit more, some of the important things started to rise to the surface. Like how's mm. your energy been right? Not just on a day-to-day -day basis, like you were talking about, but overall, how do you feel? Yeah. In the moment, she felt bad because it was like, well, the scale hasn't really changed, but okay, how's your energy on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm -hmm. a direct relation to that is how's your sleep? Yeah. Do you feel more rested in the morning? Do you feel you have more energy? Do you still have, have to, air quotes, nap? Yeah. Right? Have you been looking at things outside of the scale? You may have seen that your body composition has changed when you take measurements in your waistline or around your arms yeah. or around your hips or around your thighs because the height to waist ratio or that waistline indication is powerful as an indicator of metabolic dysfunction. Huge. So not necessarily, you, I mean, you can be thin everywhere else and have a big old belly full of visceral fat and you're not healthy. Right. Right. So we need to look elsewhere. So that waistline measurement is another powerful kind of thing that we can be looking at. What if we set this year up differently where we start taking note of our daily energy, of our daily sleep, and taking some measurements, let's say once a month. It doesn't have to be yeah. every day. Do yeah. it, do it every couple of weeks. Do it monthly. Do it quarterly if you're not a if it doesn't seem to resonate with you, but it is something that we can look at. Yeah. And that, that's that's also where it reminds me of the ER portion of the smarter goals. Because if I'm gonna do something like monthly or quarterly, like planning going into the the beginning of 2023 right now, then Let's let's take the next step to insulate ourselves from our monkey brain that likes to forget like, uh, you know, all all well laid plans are all like, you know, forgotten and tossed out the window sometimes despite our best intentions and effort. So let me put it in my calendar, just like I will to like change my air filters in my house or something like I need to do that measurement on the first of the month or on the first of the quarter or whatever it may be. So I can put that build in that accountability when I'm thinking about this right now. Because let me not expect myself three months from now to still be excited about the idea that I need to take my, my measurements again. But I know it's right. important, right? Yeah, for sure. And then another one that always, you know, about the day-to-day -day stuff that I, that I always think about is the pain level, inflammation. No yeah. matter what study you look at fasting or what type of fasting you choose that we just mentioned in the beginning when I was just rattling them off and made it sound really confusing, is your daily pain level, right? Mm -hmm. And your daily inflammation level, excuse me. A lot of the studies will use CRP, which yes. is C-reactive protein, as a marker for a secondary outcome in a lot of the, the fasting studies. And we're talking about like not even long-term windows. Like we're going to do the study in a couple of weeks on the four and six-hour time-restricted eating windows, yeah. right? So some of the stuff that we use to help people lose the weight and reverse the diabetes and metabolic syndrome and, and improve their blood work. Yeah. But that pain level or that inflammation is one that is commonly seen to change really quickly yeah, when you start awesome. a fasting regimen. So start taking note of if you are using things for pain, like NSAIDs and over-the-counter stuff, mm -hmm. what is your pain level? What is your inflammation? Do you feel puffy? Do your rings fit better, right? Do you, do you have less water retention, et cetera, et cetera, which can also be seen and which is one of the other, you know, categories on this wheel of life that we're developing is what does your blood work look like? Like maybe you should do Mm -hmm. Another series of blood work at 90 days following a an intentional fasting regimen rather than waiting the next year until it's doctor recommended, right? That sure. you go and look at your blood work. So I would I would recommend yeah. adding in your CRP level, taking a look at your full cholesterol panel, taking a look at what your fasting insulin level looks like, right? Because now you're talking about yeah. some of the things just like the blood work compared to the blood sugar number compared to the scale on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, looking at those markers are really going to be where the secret lies to that long-term improvement or that long-term success, rather than just waiting until the next yearly physical comes up. And then you're like, oh, there goes another year. Yeah. So, so, and that might involve like a conversation with your doc about yeah, the yeah. fact that you want to do that blood work again in 90 days, right? right? Or if you, if you can't get that approved or, you know, get the, the stamp that you need, maybe that means getting your own blood work done in yeah. the meantime, yeah. right? Like you, you can always walk into a, a place and do that. Like, but that, don't buy the next meal plan off yeah. of, off of Facebook. <laughs> right. Go and I'm, I've done it. 21 day boot sure. camp, 21 day yeah. fix, right? Don't do that. Go take those pay funds. For the, Go yeah. <laughs> pay for the blood work to see where you're at and see what's changed over the last night or a DEXA or a body scan even, right? A DEXA, yeah. a, a body composition scan. If you are farther down the advanced level or maybe you're getting closer to maintenance and you want to see what changes have taken place. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. And, you know, like, because along with the pain level might come along with, like you were talking about swelling. So maybe it's swelling in the ankles or yep. swelling in your feet. Like, <clears throat> right. and, and even even like a little bit of swelling in the feet goes a long way for for lack of being able, like proprioception and like understanding where I am in space. And it makes me want to not move around as much. I don't want to be as active if if I have a little bit extra swelling, like in my feet and ankles, right? It's like, it's hard to balance at that point. So you can kind of yeah. feel those things like kind of coming down potentially as, as a potential marker, you know, for, for what you're doing with your fasting. And then when you, when you do go to actually break those fasts too, you have another opportunity for feedback there because you have your cravings and relationship with food, which is a huge portion of that long-term sustainability portion. And that's where a big shift happens between going from diet over to lifestyle. Because when I start to look at what my cravings and my relationship with food, what those look like, that's going to determine a lot of the being able to enjoy the process, being able to stick with it, especially when it's like, it's not as exciting. Like it's not the beginning of the year. Motivation kind of comes down a little bit, but I still have these important long-term goals, right? And so so that's a, that's a big part of the equation too. Yeah, you said something there about breaking the fast, right? So yeah. if we're thinking about blood sugar levels, right? And metabolic flexibility, breaking the fast is important. So yeah. you might be used to your body getting fed at certain times of day, triggering your hunger hormones, you know, the the hunger cues that are from your five senses and not actually related to hunger, or maybe it's an electrolyte imbalance, AKA people will say you're dehydrated. It's not the water, it's the trace minerals and electrolytes that you need, which is stimulating right. that hunger. So the hunger can tempt you to break your fast. And then again, send your blood sugar off in a direction you don't wanna be at. So the intense swings in the blood sugar is what can also, you know, food cravings, irritability, that, that dependence or that relationship with food, because you're mm -hmm. accustomed to doing it a certain way, right? So when you break your fast, you want to ease into it, eating a meal with intention that doesn't send your glucose soaring. And you may not be good at this in the beginning. You may not be great every time you break your fast because people say, oh, I thought if you fasted, you could just eat whatever you want. Whatever well, you in, want. Yeah. in the short term, you probably can. But sure. eventually, you're going to get to a point where you've lost some weight. And now it's time to, to hone in on those those nutrient dense foods that are going to satiate your body, yeah. protein and fat primarily when you're, when you're in a weight loss phase, and then mm -hmm. it's going to have less effect on your blood sugar, which is going to have less, less ramifications in terms of food choices and yeah. those blood sugar swings. So that's a big component. We feel if you're listening, going, okay, I thought they said they were going to give me a wheel of life here. Right? So <laughs> I want to rattle these off and then wrap up today, Tommy. And then I'm really excited about the next two episodes coming up as well. But Me the fat, the wheel of life exercise would be draw a circle on your page, right? And mm -hmm. draw four, like draw a pie. So like you're, yeah. you're cutting a pie into eight pieces. So draw one, two, three, four lines, yeah, right? Like a homemade pizza, you know, not like- Yeah, there you not, go, yeah. right? So, so cut it. You got a circle? Yeah. Vertical line, horizontal line, and then two other lines, right? So you got eight pieces now. And then you're right. going to put in- your eight things that you're going to rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10. Zero is in the middle, draw nine little dashes out, and then 10 is the best out at the outside of the wheel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and you're going to do, this is what we propose, daily energy, how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis, sleep quality, your waistline or measurements category, mm. your blood work, your pain levels, your inflammation levels, your swelling, your weight, yes, put your weight as a category. Let's not pretend it doesn't exist, okay? Sure, yeah. And then your relationship with food on a one to 10. And then the last category we put here is that personal relationship category. Yeah. Or, 
you know, your social circle, your friends and family, the ones that we tell you not to talk about fasting with when you're starting out, right? <laughs> And you're going to rate yourself and you're going to draw a line, put a little dot, and then you're going to draw a line and connect those dots and see what your wheel looks like. Yeah. If it's anything like me in the past, my wheel could not get me from here to the mailbox because my <laughs> wheel was dysfunctioned. It was broken. Yeah. And it was wobbly. It was not a wheel. Okay. This is not a wheel I'd want to travel anywhere on because it would be very wobbly and uncomfortable. It's a caveman block, you know? Right, right. We need to shave down some things and improve some areas, but you're going to need mm. to do this for you. So rather than setting these goals and these New, Year re New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the year, let's try a different approach this year. We're going to use fasting to stack the deck in our favor to improve our metabolic flexibility. We're going to put a little bit of intention in the beginning into what we're going to eat when we break our fast after we set our timers. And then we're going to look at other things outside of the scale to put together our fasting wheel of life, which is gonna feed our sustainability and positive reinforcement as we go on throughout the year. Yeah, I, I love that. And one note about the personal relationships, I know you've you've said it in the past, like your your wife said when you started fasting, like you just seem you just seem happier. You just Yeah, seem, I wasn't as angry. Yeah, right. And and I mean that that emotional stability that comes off of getting away from like the hanger and the blood sugar insulin volatility that that comes along with with not fasting and not being right. intentional with with eating times. Like that that's a big component. But you add that up over time, it seeps into every one of our relationships, personal, professional and otherwise. So it's it's really cool to be taking stock of like how how are those relationships doing and and how are they affected by my fasting because but I have all of these things, these like tools in my tool belt, and now it's eight rather than just the one looking at the scale. I mean, right. now I have, a, I have a much more comprehensive picture about how this is going. And do I feel like I'm doing what I need to do? Do I need to do more of it or, or less of something over here because it's not working? I'm, I'm getting a much better visual picture of that, right? Yep. And I just love, so one of the, and we've talked as we wrap up today a lot over the weeks to months since that research came out in the middle of 2021 about looking at the sustainability of weight loss and how only 5% of people can keep off the weight. And it's not about the weight. I didn't come mm -hmm. to fasting to lose the weight. I came to fasting because I was tired and miserable and my blood work was off. And my wife looked at me and said, Hey, whatever you need to do to get healthy, we need you. Like we're a couple of years yeah. into marriage. We both have businesses. You're in clinic. I'm pregnant. Baby's coming. Like I yeah. need your help. Like, so whatever you need to do, like, let's figure this out. And luckily we had the experience, the wherewithal and the ability to digest all of the fasting information and say, okay, what's my plan? And then yeah. losing the 48 and a half pounds in 50 days, I like to say 50 and 50, wasn't that difficult. But since then, the more difficult piece has been figuring out how to keep it off and make it sustainable and turn it into a lifestyle. Right. And that's the intention that we want to wrap up 2022 with. What which wherever you fell on the spectrum of success, believe you can or you can't, you're right. So yeah. we want to give you some new intentions, some new tools, which is why we're framing this in a way where we need to create the fasting lifestyle sustainability. And what that's going to look like for you is going to be a little different than the person next door. You know, for anyone that's listening, it's going to be a little bit different for each one of you. And that's why we need those trials and those repetitions. Yeah. And then the next couple episodes as we start the year is going to be all right. Where are we going to go in review from the previous year to hit those highlights of the tools and the things you can do to get the most result quickly so you can get the most momentum built up to just absolutely crush 2023? And then on January 10th, we're going to have a really cool conversation around how to start your intermittent fasting journey, build up your resistance and your metabolic flexibility and your repetitions to get you to a six-hour window and then a four-hour window and then doing yeah. some OMADs, and then doing some extended fasts, and we're gonna deliver a new resource as well. Cool. And then we're gonna wrap up on February 1st with our first challenge of the year, nice. the first seven-day fasting lifestyle challenge. So Merry Christmas, happy holidays to yeah. everybody. It's been Man. an incredible year. Appreciate you guys listening and being on this journey with us, Tommy. Final thought? Remember what Earl and Nightingale, Nightingale said? He said, success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. So it's not all about the number on the scale. It's about yep. the journey and it's about the progressive realization of yep. that ideal. So I and just we are, love that going into 2023. We are all worthy of that as well. Absolutely. Right? Even though how much you've struggled doesn't matter.
Fasting can be the solution. We truly believe it. It's been the solution for us and so many thousands of others that we've heard from that have listened to us over the last couple of years. So we are excited to start 2023 with an absolute bang. So thank you all for listening, Tommy. Thank you as always for the conversation. And uh, I get to say, we'll see you next year. All right. (laughs) See you next year. See ya. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.